Aloe vera, I call it the cosmetic plant, right? Because there are so many uses for this plant. And you know, you can apply it on your skin, right? You can heal your wound and you can you know, moisturize your skin and things like that. Right? And you can even eat it, right? You can even add it into your dessert. Right, so it is not only you know, just a uh, very interesting plant to grow, but it is also actually very easy to grow. Right? And the best way to find out how to grow any plant or how to grow aloe vera is to, you know what, implement the grow method. Right? A very straightforward and a very structured way to do gardening with almost, right? I say almost guaranteed success. So if you have not yet downloaded my ebook, right? Make sure you click on the link in the description below and you can download the ebook for free, right? It's called Grow. Right? So today I'm going to show you exactly how to apply the grow method and you know how do you find out uh, how we can grow aloe vera at home easily, right? So the first step in the grow method itself is to really go online, right? Use the power of the internet, right? Google for photos of aloe vera growing in the wild. So what we are doing here is that we want to uh, recreate, right? We want to replicate the same growing environment, the same natural habitat they have in the wild, right? That's because their natural habitat is where the plants don't experience any kind of stress, right? And they can grow to their full potential, right? That's their home, that's their actual home, and that's where they are most comfortable, right? So the closer that we can replicate the same growing environment, right? And, you know, have the same kind of growing conditions, Right, the higher chance that we can grow them successfully in our own garden. Right, so that is the secret. Right, that's the underlying principle of uh, how do you do gardening uh, successfully. Right, so we will focus on the five growing conditions, and that is uh, light, water, humidity, potting media, and feeding. So we will use the photos that we gather online. Right, we we Google for all those photos, and we will look at these photos. Right, we we'll observe for these growing conditions in the in these photos. So, right now, let's look at some of these photos of our aloe vera growing in the wild. So, can you see that, you know, they are growing in very open areas, right? So, that really means that, you know, they are exposed to direct sunlight throughout the day. So, if we are going to grow aloe vera in our own garden, right, we will want to give them at least Right, eight hours of uh, direct sunlight every day, right? Grow them right under the sun, right? Just like what they have in their natural habitat. So anything less than that, right? They will be some under some kind of like stress, and they don't grow as well, right? So that is the trick, right? So how about water, right? The next condition we looked at, right? Looking at the photos, I can see very dry grounds, right? right? You can see the soil is pretty, uh, sandy and gritty, right? So when we grow them in our garden, we should not be watering them that often, right? We should not keep them, keep the soil very moist all the time, right? We would only water when the soil is really totally bone dry. So if you are growing in the pot, right, you can actually leave it up, right? You can feel the weight, right? So if it is really, really light, then it is time to water, right? So if you grow them in the ground, right, you have a, a, a very big garden, right? So look at the topsoil, right? You can touch the topsoil. And you only water when the topsoil feels really, really dry. Right, so that's the trick. And the next growing condition we look at is humidity. Right, so, and we cannot actually see humidity, right? But we can, you know, uh, look at the surroundings. Right? Look at the op uh, surroundings areas. Right? Open areas usually mean uh, very windy. Right? There's good air circulation. And that actually draws humidity away right? because of the airflow and things like that. So when we grow, uh, when, it's, when it's say aloe vera can be grown in uh, low humidity or uh, windy environments. So in our own garden, right, in our garden itself, we can then choose a very sunny, right, a very windy spot to grow, right. And one of the best place to go is will be your like, you know, balcony or, you know, at your patio or things like that, right. So that is humidity. And moving on now, we look at the fourth growing condition, we look at potting media. So from the photos, we can see other plants, right? There are surrounding plants around the aloe vera plant, right? And we can see, you know, dead leaves and there are plant matter in the soil. So for potting media-wise, we can use uh, compost and, you know, we mix it uh, with uh, equal parts of uh, burnt earth, right? Or we can use uh, sand and compost together, right? So for this case, I would probably use, uh, you know, maybe two, two parts of burnt earth or sand and, you know, one part of compost. Uh, because I, you know, I think that we don't want to retain too much water in the soil. Right? We will want the soil to be really draining as what they have in the wild. 
So if you are not like mixing your own potting mix, right, you can try growing or you, you can try buying those uh, readily available packets of uh, potting media right, that are you know, recommended for the succulents and cactus. Right? That would be a good start. Right? I think aloe vera itself is uh, not a very fussy plant. Right? It, it, it's not too fussy about the soil condition. So I think the pre-mix for the cactus and succulents will be just uh, good enough. And the last growing condition we look at is feeding. So we already observe uh, plant matter in the soil, right? And that really means that, you know, there are nutrients in the soil, right? There are constant nutrients in the soil. So therefore, we will want to uh, fertilize the soil on a regular basis, right? So go for those uh, general growth fertilizers. But I would probably recommend uh, to use half of the recommended amounts, right? Half of the amounts on the label itself. Right? Since aloe vera is a slow-growing plant, there's no need for excessive uh, feeding. So there you go, the grow method, right? It's, it tells you exactly how you should be growing aloe vera well. So if you have past failures before, right? Now you know exactly how to grow them well. You can actually see, you know, exactly where you have done wrong. Right? Is it because of the watering or is it because you are growing in some shady place and because of, you know, insufficient light, right? Things like that, right? So you can see, you know, with the grow method, anyone and everyone can replicate the same kind of success. Right? I know many gardeners are very frustrated when they got, you know, tips, right? They got this... Are uh, very uh their yeah, their friends give them those those tips right, but somehow those tips never work for them, and they are uh, and they really convince themselves. You know they try everything, nothing works, and this they, they convince themselves that you know they have no green fingers, they have no uh, gardening talent. But you know the real underlying secret is the growing environment. It's how you manage and how you create the growing environment, and once you get it right, you will be able to grow them well. So if you have learned something new today, share, share with me, right, comment below. If you have not subscribed, right, don't miss out, right? Don't miss out on all this video. Click on the subscribe button and follow me, right? Follow me and you can become a better gardener, right? Gardening is something that uh, everyone can enjoy. It, it is super enjoyable without stress and without frustrations. So click on the subscribe button below, enjoy your gardening and I will see you in my next video.